it's good morning for me so oh okay <laughs> what time is yeah, it yeah. i'm in the us it's uh, 10 am oh, okay so that is a pretty good time yeah it is yeah it is that's why when you guys were talking about changing i was like oh no please don't <laughs> okay so i guess only on this time is only uh, not not good for australians uh, rest of yeah, them yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. rest of them it's, it's a, uh, almost a good timing uh, but for australians it's pretty like uh, early morning for them 2 am or 3 am oh wow yeah man that's uh, that's amazing 2 am 10 am over here 10 pm over there yeah so know. it's like a 3 30 am something for them yeah Anyway, okay talking yeah so uh let me record this okay i have recorded this and okay i am recording this fine so guys uh, as we all know we uh, we are now uh, going through the final few topics from ccnp and uh, one second let me get the portal So all the uh, all the uh, last class videos are uploaded here so you can see three files don't be surprised by seeing uh, three three files here uh, basically it was a very lengthy class of 3 to 4 hours so i have just uh, split them into three uh, parts so that's why you will see three uh, small parts of each uh, topic which we had in the previous class so this is what we covered in the previous day okay so this is one different topic this is a different topic and this is this was the different topic so it was total of like 4 hours so i just uh, split it in a uh, three uh, different parts so that you guys can go through uh, easy easily don't have to go through three hours of a class so so that's something okay and uh, the class uh, notes for this is already put up on the g drive so you have to scroll uh, to the top you go to the class 0 uh, tab where it says full class notes there's a uh, g drive link you have to click that and uh, these are the notes which uh, you would be able to see so so we had covered something called as uh, network assurance so the complete notes is here class numbers uh, or, or i can say session number 6 of the ccnp module so today's class i'm going to cover uh, the pdf 7 and a uh, one topic from this that is uh, pdf 5 okay so what are the topics for the day okay so this is not updated one i will put the updated one for, for the ip security but the network prog programmability is a, a updated file so we are going to check all this today okay i'm going to cover like uh one one session of first few uh, topics we will go with a quick q and a and then we will go with the second uh, session today itself and then we will go with another q and a and as i told you there is one more topic from ip security and then finally the last q and a so we will we will be having three uh, sessions so the whole lengthy video i'm going to divide it into three parts and that's why you will see today's class as well been divided into three and uh, you can accordingly uh, study or go back to the video you can refer to the notes so this topic what we have for uh, ccnp it's uh, more into the devnet topics okay so the same topic i also discuss while i am uh, teaching cisco devnet associate very similar topic you also got in your 
uh, CCNP Encore topic. So this this topic is something which uh, we have it overlapping on the DevNet Associate and CCNP Encore. Okay. And uh, okay, regarding the tracks, if uh, I hope you all know this. Uh, so let's say if you're over here, CCNA. So nowadays you have an equivalent uh, DevNet topic running for uh, the CCNA level itself. So let's say this is CCNA Enterprise. You have alternatively or parallelly you have CCNA DevNet going on. The next is uh, professional level. So let's say you are going through Encore and NRC. Okay. And over here, there is a uh, equivalent topic uh, as we have uh, in CCNP as well. So it's it's basically called as concentration uh, paper. So we got a automation topic over here, which uh, is in CCNP level. Okay, but since we have we have uh, selected Encore and NRC, so we will not be going through with this topic. Okay, so how do you qualify your CCNP? So basically, to be a CC NP qualified. Okay, so in 2020, CCNP consists of two modules. One is called as the core subject or the core paper and then the concentration paper. Okay, so over here you have only one module. There is no uh, selection or there is no option. This is a mandatory paper. And if you are done with this, then it's equivalent to CCI uh, written enterprise as well. But let's say you are first focused on achieving CCNP certification. So you have to be, you have to clear two papers now. So this is compulsory. There is no selection. But over here you have NRC, which is advanced uh, routing switching. You have some uh, something for SD WAN. You have the DevNet in the professional level. You have for wireless topic, so you can pick any one of them. So this batch, which I'm taking up, we have gone with this module, NRC module. So we are going through Encore plus NRC. The reason why I took NRC is this module is going to help you to achieve your CCI lab. When you are, whenever you are planning to go with the CCI lab, this is going to help you. But yes, once you have done with Encore and NRC might be if you want to prepare for SD-WAN or the next level of automation, then you can uh, prepare yourself or you can enroll some institute for other uh, topic as well. But that's that's something up to you. But if you're looking only from the CCNP point of view, then you have to clear Encore as well as any one paper out of the concentration. So you have like uh, six to eight concentration papers. You can select any one. Okay. So that's how you get CCNP. And as I told you, by clearing CC, uh, CCNP, the Encore paper, you are good, good to be called as CCI written. So you have to prepare now for your eight hours of CCI lab, okay, version 1.0. So this is something which we discussed initially as well, but I thought of rev uh, revising or rewinding it once again, uh, tell you what are the things. Okay, so what are the topics for the day? I have uh, mentioned over here. So first we will start up with something uh, called as IPsec VPN since this is little, uh, what do you say, important topic or uh, uh, a little, little watch topic. So let's have the first topic uh, covered up first. And then we will go into the next two topics. So this, these are more into theory. Okay. We do not have a lot of practical, but I'll show you few scripts for Python. And I'll also show you few scripts for Ansible as well as we have some scripting here as well, but they are all, uh, not very technical when you compare with IPsec VPN. Okay. So as we all know, enterprise nowadays is consisting of routing and switching. Uh, virtualization, security, okay, 
uh, wireless uh, what else uh, the layer 2 attacks uh, which comes under security itself ipsec i have considered it under security once again and uh, programmability okay so we have done lot of topics from routing switching already o ospf bgp uh, eigrp so all those topics were under r and s okay virtualization we have not covered it's just a 5 to 10 percent of your ccnp portion so uh, might be we will take one hour or two hour in the next class okay yes we have taken a lot of topic already from security so if you remember we went with the control attacks control plane attack management plane attack uh, copp mpp so the, those were all security topics okay and as i told you the vpn as well as i have considered in security so we are gonna take one vpn today that is uh, ipsec vpn so in the next uh, class i will go with uh, gre i'll show you some mpls vpns and uh, dm vpns so the, these are some of the vpn which is basically from uh, ccnp security or service provider point of view now they have included in enterprise as well okay wireless we have not covered yet but once again they are more theoretical approach there is no practical neither we can do a practical without a or uh, without a real hardware we need a access point to uh, demonstrate okay so for wireless i'm gonna cover a lot of theory all the antennas the bandwidths the channels the rfc codes and there is something called as the wireless controller okay which I can show it, I can show show you the dashboard and uh, how do you configure it. So that part we can take care. And programmability is something which we will be covering today and we will be winding off today. Okay. So it's once again, 10, uh, 5 to 10% of your CCNP. So this is the whole uh, structure of uh, CCNP. Okay. So any doubt so far? Are we good? Any doubts with respective to uh, the syllabus? Am I good? Uh, I'm audible. Any disturbance? Good. You're good. Okay. All right, so fine. So let me place you guys on mute. If if you find any uh, doubt, so please uh, feel free to use the chat window. And once I have completed the first topic, we will of course start with a Q and A before moving to the second topic. So in in meanwhile, if you find any doubts, then make use of the chat window, and uh, I will be able to answer you. Okay. All right, so. Let's start with topic number one for the day, IPsec VPN. So how many of you are aware of IPsec VPN side to side? Make use of chat window because I have already placed you on mute. So do you guys know what is side to side VPN? Have you worked on this technology? Okay, so I see one yes. What about others? Okay. Okay, so this is the CCNP Encore syllabus topic. Okay, this, these are the topic that we would be covering under uh, topic 2 and topic 3. Okay, regarding topic 1, it's actually not a part of uh, Encore. Okay, so I have here. So what do you see? From the encore topic is just IPsec tunneling. They have not described phase one, phase two, 
they have not described any versions here they just want you guys to know uh, this under virtualization okay and interesting thing here is ipsec has been placed under virtualization virtual tunnel vpn virtual private lan all right so uh, it's no more uh, kept inside a security uh, top uh, category if if you if you go to the ccnp security track basically these tunnels are a security technology right but what enterprise considered it to be one of the virtualization topic okay so let's uh, start with ipsec vpn tunnel so let's say um, i have my enterprise xyz i got few more enterprises okay so let's say this is located in dubai india so let's say this is in us okay xyz and let's say this is in australia okay now it's uh, it's understandable that enterprise uh, i mean the land part the land part of each enterprise they have their own private segments private networks their own end host the, their own uh, access layer switches distribution switches core switches right so it's fine what if there are some servers which are located here and the users which are, who are over here on different location they want to access that particular server okay now what do you think what would be the solution here you can make use of various technology for uh, connectivity so let's say one of them would be mpls connectivity okay but let's say the server which you want to access that needs to be accessed in very uh, short duration of time L let's say you just want to access it immediately instantly okay that's very critical and you want to access it suddenly mpls is mpls is not going to be uh, uh, letting you to do this because to get the mpls connection you have to take the approval from the management the cost will be considered here the uh, management are going to say yes or no if you want to go with mpls right so there are a lot of concerns associated with mpls every 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 enterprise over here like dubai india australia us they will have another path to internet as well okay let's say the users so why do you want users to send the traffic over mpls they, the traffic can go over on internet if they want to access facebook or google right similar way let's say there are users so they can have a breakout for internet they don't have to use the mpls traffic they can make use of uh, the internet traffic alternatively this is for internet users okay so for your enterprise point of view the enterprise traffic that is accessing of server accessing of application accessing of your enterprise confidential data for you have mpls okay and all rest activities facebook youtube watching movies uh, whatsapp so you will prefer having internet okay so let's say the second path over here was internet now as i told you there is there is a requirement where you need to access the server now we will not prefer internet for that because internet is open system for everyone that means there are a lot of hackers intruders lot of spammers who are 
over on internet who are trying to steal the data and you will never directly try to use uh, the internet for accessing this server these are confidential things and you cannot go with mpls let's say the connection you do not have let's say this is a brand new enterprise and and the mpls connection is still not terminated on this so you cannot wait for your management to come spend a lot of expense on for mpls etc okay but thing is they have a successful internet connection so now what you can do is you can uh, rely on this internet and you can build some secure uh, tunnel here or you can build some secure medium to access the server so let's say what happens here is this user so let's say we have some firewall or some uh, routers on this which connects to internet and on other side i have firewall or router and this is uh, a complete internet uh, technology so i can create my own tunneling medium okay so this can be protected now now what happens is any user data will have to enter this tunnel and it has to go via internet to the next region so let's say india to dubai and the traffic which just lands onto the remote side get decapsulated and then they enter to the lan and they can uh, access the server now let's say server is responding back server will once again go back to the firewall it will now get encrypted it will enter inside the tunnel and it will reach back to the originator and over here the decapsulation happens and the traffic will hit this user so there is a uh, one to one communication happening and where is this all happening it is happening all over on internet okay so your vpn virtual private network is providing you a secure mechanism over on a shared medium to pass the data over which you needed to have uh, mpls which is a cost effective the you don't have so much of time uh, for uh, mpls connections to happen so this is just in your under your control you, this is your firewall on both the side you have a successful internet you will do some connection you will do some configuration on this firewall as well as this firewall and your vpn is up now you can access uh, whatever uh, connection whatever servers you want okay so that's that's something called as vpn okay so in short it's a virtual private network so this is why under enterprise uh, topic ccnp enterprise topic they have actually placed under the virtualization category okay virtual private network basically you're not gonna pay for anything or uh, pay for anything apart from the internet because internet is something which will be uh, already available for any enterprises if the users want to access to google or study purpose so they will have some internet but you are gonna do some additional configuration and you are gonna create your own private network and this private network will be used only between you and the remote side no one else can uh, connect to this vpn so vpn is always end to end that means if some data is start starting from this point a the only the b can decapsulate it that means you are sending something with encapsulation the traffic can only be decapsulated here if some if if someone tries to send this to someone else then that will not happen the other the the receiver side will not be able to decapsulate the reason is we have to follow some patterns here we will follow some patterns parameters the same parameters has to be configured on this side as well that is how the tunnel comes up okay even a small or even a fractional point of the parameter get mismatched let's say you are making use of md5 here and over here you are making use of sha uh, sha uh, 256 
Now, they are two different things, two different protocol. Okay. Now, your packet will not be getting decrypted or, or decapsulated. So, your packet is going with encapsulation of MD5 and the same traffic which hits on the receiver side is not going to get decapsulated because the protocol used are different. So, that's why VPN is very secure. Okay. You are going to uh, talk to the remote side uh, engineer. Okay. Let's say you have a different network engineer on, on this enterprise and you are going to have a different network engineer on this side. Now, one has to send his parameter to the other guy and the other guy will do all the configuration and all, all, all the required thing on his side of firewall and then he's going to share that configuration or he's going to share his uh, side of parameter to this engineer and now this engineer will do all the required configuration now both side must have uh, a common uh, configuration and then they will initiate a call where they can test if the vpn is uh, fine up working well or not and then the actual data traffic is being pushed or actual data traffic is being sent okay so what kind of mutual communication happens between the two network engineers okay so i've prepared one document so let's say uh, you are uh, enterprise uh, india okay this is you guys and this is the other part of the enterprise dubai let's say we are calling it as google and we are calling this as uh, youtube now you are gonna receive something this is called as a vpn template or vpn questionnaire from this guy the network engineer from google and uh, data center or enterprise and he's gonna say that this is his side of parameters okay so what what are the things that you can uh, see here so you can see uh, the company name you can see some context point of view you can see his uh, uh, device that he's using so let's say he's saying that his device is a cisco router and the public ip of this router is uh, so and so so the, you will see there are two ips now one is device ip so basically this would be acting as the outside ip which directly connects to internet and encryption domain is your uh, nated ip nated ip in the sense as we told we are not gonna expose our uh, land traffic or the or the private networks right so these private networks would be converted into a public nat public ip and that public ip we are gonna give it to the enterprise uh, abc india and also you are gonna tell what are the internal servers you can see over here mm, where do you see internal servers okay so these are internal servers so let me write it something like this these are nothing but these are the servers okay now let me tell you what is the requirement here so let's say this is one enterprise as google over here you have youtube and they need a quick ipsec vpn this is their router that they are gonna tell that this is the uh, ip 66 uh, wh whatever ip that we have uh, over here okay so you can see this outside ip so i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna keep here um, there's one more public ip which is called as uh, 141 which is nothing but the nat ip okay and there's something called as internal project now what is this internal project as i told you vpn is nothing but accessing accessing uh, some servers or internal applications right so let's say these are those servers internal servers and users from here want to access those servers over on internet shared medium and these projects we are going to label it with some uh, identifier so let's say a b c e f t okay and each servers have some private ip so i can say that 
192 is uh, 192, 168, 1.1. EFT is 192, 168, 1.2. VBC is uh, 192, 168, 1.3. Okay. So, the whole concept here is uh, to build the IPsec VPN so that these users on this enterprise which is in India can access the backend servers which are located in Dubai and these are the backend servers okay so you receive some VPN template and the VPN uh, or, or the network engineer is gonna share his side of VPN IPs and the servers okay and he's also going to share all the other respective data. So if you see here, these are some data which he's going to share. So you have IKE versions and you have some IPsec version. So we are going to see what does IPsec VPN uh, comprises of? What are the different components that's required here? So you can see from the template, he's going to share a few more details. Okay. So you have the encryption algorithms, you have the uh, authentications or hash taggings. You have some life timers, you have the Defi Hellman group, you have authentication method, some pre-shared key, aggressive mode disabled, right? So these are all the things which the data center Dubai has shared with you. Now, you as a network engineer over here, you are going to make use of this data to construct the VPN on your side and then also send your side of data to this guy. So you will email him saying that your side of public IP is uh, this. Okay. You're going to tell that your encryption is located on this. And since this is a one to one connection or this is a unidirectional connection that is connection or the connection happens only on this because the live users are here. Whereas this is just a servo. Right. So you are going to define the access list here because you don't want other users to make use of the VPN and make use of the servers. So, so we are only allowing 192, 168, one, uh, let's say 2.0 series people to access the server. So we will make use of something called as access list for filtering purpose. Okay. Now let's come to the uh, concepts of VPN. Why, why VPN? What is the advantage of VPN? So VPN is considered to provide three benefits. One is called as confidentiality, integrity and authentication. Okay. So what is what here? So confidentiality is something, let's say, this is you. Okay. You're making a uh, bank transfer or you're making a bank login on a web portal. So let's say this is your bank XYZ. So you would be provided with some username and password, right? So using username and password, you can access your own account. But in the same way, your friend, do you think he can uh, put any random username and password and then try to log in your account. So that is not possible. So to open or to access this account, you must have a rightful username and password, which is only with you. And that's not been with anyone. So that's a confidential matter, right? So you need a right parameters to access something. Similar way, VPN being a, uh, a virtual in nature, it must have a matching details, then it can in, uh, encapsulate and decapsulate. If the, if the parameters are not matching, the VPN is not going to work. They are not going to come up. Okay. So VPN is going to provide confidentiality to your data. What is integrity? Let's say as a user, you just did some bank transfer. Okay, for 1000 US dollar and this US dollar when it has arrived on the uh, bank account, it just sh show, shows to be $25. Now, this is something like a, uh, some kind sorts of editing or some sorts of correction that's been done to the data, right? So your packet, which is carrying $1000. If someone just introduced man in middle and if he tries to change the data, so basically he can change the value of that, right? But 
I'm talking about integrity. That means if you are sending thousand dollars, the bank must receive thousand dollars. That means there is a good integ integrity level onto this connection. So your VPN provides integrity as well. If you are sending some data, the data don't get uh, interrupted or the data don't get hacked by someone and no one can easily introduce some sorts of uh, malware or some sorts of correction to the data so that the data which is going from one end to other end you lose the integrity so integrity deals with that nobody change the data uh, of your vpn packet okay authentication authentication is something when let's say the backend users okay the backend users who are allowed to access a VPN. So let's say this is my VPN. And as I told you, I will make use of access list now. Okay. So only the rightful users can access the servers. Not that entire LAN uh, units, which can comprises of multiple teams, might be some security department, HR department, uh, some marketing department. So we will not give access to all these guys. We will give only to that group of people who actually needs the access of this. So authentication, those who have the right login details can access it, rest they cannot. So VPN as a uh, technology, it's gonna give confidentiality, integrity to the packet and authentication. So these are the three main advantage what vpn serves okay virtual private network and as i told you this is a technology which is virtualized or we are creating a virtual private network over on a shared infrastructure this is a very important term okay on a shared infrastructure we are not gonna buy a, a point to point connection we are not gonna buy a mpls we are not gonna invest a lot of money for some sorts of point-to-point uh, -point technology. We are making a simple internet and on the top of internet, we are constructing our VPN. The VPN is meant to have the confidentiality, integrity, authentication, and we are good with accessing our own files from our different enterprise or data center and all over on a shared medium. Okay. Now, how many types of VPN that we normally uh, know about or the VPN that's in the CCNP security or in the firewall technology. So VPN being more into security uh, side. So how many types of uh, VPNs we have or how many flavors of VPN we have? So one of them is side to side VPN. Side to side VPN is nothing but the examples that I gave you from one data center to another data center, from one enterprise to another enterprise, okay? Now, apart from this, there is also something called as remote access VPN, okay? Uh, remote access VPN needs a third party uh, client, which I can write it as VPN client. You might have uh, seen the client called as uh, any connect okay so this is also a type of vpn a one one flavor of vpn but this is more into remote access okay a user point of view the vpn technique technology will be uh, constructed and be placed on the firewall or router of your uh, enterprise you as a user, let's say you are doing a work from home. Nowadays, due to COVID uh, reasons, we all are doing, most of us are doing work from home. So if I want to connect to my enterprise, I just straight away cannot make use of internet and access my uh, files. I'll make use of this client. Okay, this client basically will be fed with my IP address, the IP of my uh, router or my firewall. So if you see here, so the moment I click on connect, it's going to initiate a VPN connection, uh, which is on my enterprise uh, firewall. And then they will negotiate with all this parameter, the parameter that I have discussed here. 
Okay, so not all of them because remote access uh, configuration is little different than the side to side. Uh, so they have their own parameter. Most of them are same. So they will uh, negotiate and you know that there are sometimes RSA token, uh, Duo Mobile. So if you might have seen this kind of authentication. Okay. So so every every enterprise have their own ways of uh, two way authentication you can have this integrated with yeni connect or you can have the rsa tokens right so you can have this integrated on your remote access and the users can get uh, connected through and they can access the file so that's all about over here and this is not actually the part of uh, the ccnp enterprise so we will not be going through this so we are only gonna check site to site VPN. Okay. So if you ever get chance to enroll my firewall class or might be some sometime in future, if I go with the CCNP security, we will discuss about other types of VPN like uh, flex VPNs, uh, GRE we have here, uh, DM VPN also we have here, MPLS we got it. Uh, so other types of VPN like remote access VPN, clientless, non-clientless, with client so all the other things are more into the security concept okay so let's give more importance uh, for now on site to site vpn okay so what is the basic building blocks for site to site Okay, so let's say I have a router placed here. Now what happens is we are gonna do the configuration first, all sorts of configuration for, uh, for the VPN that's required. So let's say the network engineer uh, from this enterprise will do all required configuration over here and uh, the network engineer for this data center or enterprise will put up all the VPN configuration here. Okay, we will discuss about those configuration. Now it's time for testing. Because the work of network engineer is to configure and test and then let the management or the let the a server team or let the other team know that the VPN is constructed and from the next day they can actually access the servers with the servers for which the request was created okay so how, how without the network engineers uh, notification these guys will not come to know that the connections have been made or uh, they are good with uh, uh, accessing the servers so there will be a good uh, number of days let's say two days or one week for the network engineers to do the configuration go into the call and fix this vpn issue okay fine so let's say this is internet or i call it as uh, isp which is nothing but internet now the moment we start with the configuration the first thing that happens is the phase one start negotiating which is also called as ICKMP or IKE phase one okay so this is gonna get negotiated now there are two types of phase one one is called as a quick mode other one is called as main mode okay quick and main we don't use quick mode in the case of site to site the reason is this quick mode they only comprises of three messages and in the vpn technology we consider three messages to be a shorter number of messages so we go with main mode which comprises of six messages totally now what are these messages okay let's say network engineer who is over here he initiate the VPN testing. Okay. So 
from his side the message 1 is gonna get initiated msg 1 now what is this message 1 gonna carry so from this list of parameters let's say the message 1 is this one the first parameter okay so once that message is been arrived on the second side or the remote side the remote router will automatically start negotiating and he will send message 2 okay now the message 1 message 2 gets compared if they are good if let's say on one side you have uh, a aes 256 and on the receiving side as well you get aes 256 that means it's a matching parameter now the initiator which i'm going to write it as initiator and over here i'm going to write it as responder okay now initiator will send message 3 okay and let's assume message 3 is something else that it's talking about lifetime might be it is talking about a dh group now what happens is the responder has to respond back and he will share the same set of messages might be uh, he's gonna say that i am on group 4 or my life timer is on 3600 now the the initiator is sending something and receiver is something uh, sending something right so they are two different values now your vpn or the phase 1 is gonna get stuck your vpn is stuck with some sorts of error message say, saying that you are stuck at mm message 3 the moment you get this message you need to know that in the case of site to site in the case of main mode there are six messages and you are good with first two and now you are stuck at three and the message three is gonna carry this so you will immediately call the other guy the other network engineer on the remote side and you are gonna tell that you are doing a testing for vpn ipsec and i see this is the error code so please uh, double check and see that you have set this parameter or not he will log into the box and then he will see okay so the by some some mistake he did some other sorts of configuration he is going to rectify that and then he will let you know you will initiate the testing once again it will once again start with one the uh, responder is going to send two you will send three and now since the engineer has rectified now the message three and message four are matching uh, uh, parameters now the initiator will send message five and then finally message 6 so these are six messages what happens in ip6 main mode and this is a default mode okay if in case you want quick mode then you have to define and say that you want quick mode but we don't use a uh, quick mode for a side to side the reason is in the case of quick mode troubleshooting is little complex because all the message all this messages have to be sent in three messages so one message is going to carry uh, this many parameter the second is going to carry this many parameter now the troubleshooting becomes lot of mess right if you are sending so many things in one message so that's one thing and second thing over uh, in the main mode and quick mode the quick mode is widely used for remote access vpns for a faster connection what is remote access vpn the access vpn the the second flavor of vpn that's uh, let's say work from home that vpn the users point of vpn so from that point of view you are just uh, you you can use a quick mode but from side to side point of view it's a uh, main mode by default side to side will have main mode which carries six messages okay so once you are good with phase 1 what happens is let's say this is router 1 and this is router 2 so a virtual tunnel is constructed and this const uh, this this is for ik phase 1 ik phase 1 successful now the moment phase 1 comes up now the second step is ipsec okay ipsec is nothing but encapsulation it's a encapsulation which is added in to the 
data ipsec encapsulation and or we can also call it as ike phase 2 internet key exchange the full form of this is internet key exchange okay whereas where i told something about ick mp ik phase 1 okay so this is internet security association key management protocol internet security association key management protocol okay and this is internet key exchange so phase 1 we can call it as ik phase 1 that is first step so that happens when all the six messages from main mode are exchanged and they are all good we see the phase 1 now what happens is the second steps starts from the initiator and this is responder and that's once again sets of parameters that we have here ip set encryption ipsec hash lifetime pfs uh, perfect forward secrecy and compression disabled okay now let's say in the case of uh, second step there are only three messages okay so phase 1 comprises of six message phase 2 comprises uh, comprises of three message so let's say that goes well and now you have your phase 2 or ipsec successful okay so once phase 1 and phase 2 is up now your backend data will flow within this tunnel so your now data will come over here and the outside interface which you are using in your vpn configuration will encapsulate the traffic and they will push it inside the traffic uh, inside this tunnel and over here they get decapsulated and they can access uh, whatever server that we have uh, been asked to allow so here in this case these are some uh, projects or internal things so they can access it okay so this is all happening over on internet so this internet is filled with lot of uh, hackers introduced intruders lot of malwares all those things so you have your secure tunnel built on the shared medium they are negotiating with some fixed or uh, some mutual agreed values some key values there will be some pre shared key values and you are sending the datas okay fine so this is uh the concept of ipsec vpn now let me uh, tell you the protocols that is uh, used for ipsec there are two protocols one is ah and esp this is called as authentication header and this is called as encapsulation security payload and uh, by default this protocol is used in the case of ipsec vpns if someone ask you during interview which what are the protocol that's used in ipsec side to side so these are the protocols and this is default now what is the difference between the two so in the case of ah it provides uh, authentication plus integrity i'm talking this from our uh, point number 1 okay so what 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 does vpn provide us confidentiality in, uh, integrity and authentication right so if you are making use of ah it's going to give you authentication and integrity but if you are making use of esp protocol you get all the three support that is authentication 
plus integrity plus confidentiality so that's why this is acting as the default protocol in vpn scenarios okay fine now there are two types of mode in the case of ipsec two modes of uh, ipsec stages okay the first one is called as transport second one is called as tunnel and by default tunnel is used in site to site the reason is in the case of tunnel the header is also been uh, uh what you say secured okay whereas in the case of transport the header don't get protected or header is not going to get uh, secured it's just your data which gets uh secured but in the case of tunnel both the header and the data gets protected by one more new header okay so if i have to draw this in a uh, packet type of structure so the first one here is uh, transport okay so in the case of uh, transport let's say the original packet is something like this ip header tcp header and the data if you would have make use of transport now what happens is your original i uh, header don't get secured that means it's just gonna secure only the data part okay so the uh, ah header authentication header gets added up here so it just gonna protect tcp and data so your original header don't get protected but if at the same time you make use of tunnel mode tunnel mode of vpn now there will be a new header that get added up on onto the original packet okay so let's say this is now new header so the new header gets added up in the front of uh, this so let's say ip header tcp header and the data so which one do you think is more secure while sending in a in, uh, shared technology so this is more secured mechanism because you're gonna cover or you're gonna encapsulate the entire packet along with header which don't happen here okay so this is ipsec uh, side to side default configuration and uh, this is default in the case of ipsec and also this is uh, default the main mode okay so this is these are the uh, default things in in the case of site to site uh, i'm talking about site to site i'm not talking about remote access okay so site to site those are the default values okay so let's check it out now the vpn concept from initialization point of view we already have discussed how how do we initialize or how do we carry out the testing so we are going to check once again so there are two steps the first one is uh, okay so let me go with step by step process so we know the main thing is phase 1 and phase 2 which i can write it somewhere here so let's say the phase 1 and then phase 2 thing okay but if i have to write it out in all all the steps uh, then there are like five steps the first step would be initialization so what do you understand by initialization is the the initiator so i told you there's router 1 and there's router 2 so the first router is initializing the vpn connection so that is the first step okay phase 2 as we know 
it would be main mode six message so let's say all is fine we are good with that now we are moving towards phase two once again the parameters are all good we we can see the three message which is being uh, negotiated we are good with it and then we come towards the data transfer and then finally we also do the term termination okay so when do the termination happen termination in the sense if there is a vpn can, uh, established if you have already transmitted the data you don't have any uh, real users who are accessing this vpn or they are accessing some backend here now it's not very safe to keep the vpn uh, active okay so by default vpn have some uh, something called as 30 minutes of ideal timeout if there is no traffic on this vpn the uh, vpn is gonna get terminated and that is what i have written here so these are five steps initialization phase 1 phase 2 data transfer termin uh, uh, terminations okay but yes there are some uh, technology uh, because some some people don't want the vpn to get uh, terminate terminated so what they what do they do is they set some keep alive okay some some uh, minor data some small uh, size data which will just initiate some ping uh, so that the tunnel never comes down and uh, there's there's some sorts of data flowing and uh, tunnel don't come out okay but we don't do it uh, in in a few of enterprise we just put them into term, uh, termination if there is no data. All right, now let's once again check what are the parameters here and what are the parameters for phase two, okay? So as we know, this is also called as IKE phase one or ICAKMP, ICAKMP. And this is referred to IKE phase two or IPsec. Okay, so what are the different parameters that we need for phase one and IPsec or the phase two? So here we need hashing. Hashing is nothing but which deals with integrity so that the values uh, over the VPN are not changed and the protocol that we have here is MD5 SHA SHA256 we also make use of authentication parameters okay we also have something called as Defi Hellman group so this basically comes in uh, numbers like two four six so this dh group act as our rsa modulus if you remember in the case of ssh we enable some rs modulus like one zero two four or uh, four zero nine six right so basically they talk from the strength point of view what strength of modulus do you want to generate do you want to generate a very secure ssh but remember, if you go with a higher value, there will be overhead on the router for in, uh, for encapsulation and decapsulation because this router, while sending something onto the internet, it will go with this level of encapsulation. And the same data, when it is uh, arrived on the remote side, it will spend more resource on decapsulating the same data. So the more strength you go the more overhead you start giving on your devices okay so we will go with group 2 let's say the group 2 is 1024 strength we have something called as lifetime uh, timers okay like 3600 or 84000 so these are all in seconds we have something called as uh, encryption okay and encryption we have protocol like uh, ds 3 ds okay aes and then something called as uh, 
सिक्योर की विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज प्री शेड की we can also go with some digital certificates okay but most of the time we prefer having pre shared key so the sender is gonna share some pre shared key and he is gonna say he want pre shared key he he want it to be uh, pre shared uh, uh, keys not digital certificate if he if he sends you some digital digital certificate so he is gonna give the certificates and that you gonna install it okay but he has clearly defined that he wants it to be pre shared key and the key is been shared and you can see here am mode is disabled what is am mode the three messages so this is disabled that means by default it is main mode only which consists of six messages fine so these are some parameters for uh, phase 1 now what about for phase 2 most of most of the things are uh, repeated okay but there are some additional things here so in the case of phase 2 you been provided with ipsec uh, protocol whether you need uh, ah or esp but as we know that by default esp will be con uh, considered not ah because here we get all the three uh, benefits that is confidentiality integrity and authentication but here we don't okay we also get some encapsulation mode encapsulation mode is nothing but whether you need transport mode or tunnel mode and we know that by default tunnel mode the reason is both header plus the data is been secured in the tunnel mode by adding a new header whereas in the transport it's only the data that gets secured not the uh, header okay and as usual like uh, from uh, phase 1 it's also gonna take something like encryption uh, that is like uh, ds uh, aes all this there is something called as authentication okay like md5 sha this this uh, option for life timer 86 40 100 uh, 400 seconds 36 second so whatever that whatever he is gonna give we are gonna make use of it and then dh group whatever dh group you want so he can uh, go with some pfs value perfect forward secrecy perfect forward uh, secrecy okay so this is about securing the phase 2 let's say if there is a vpn packet inside the tunnel okay and if someone has captured this packet and he is trying to analyze uh, it over on wireshark okay now there is chances he can get access to three or four packets and he try to decode the things but using a good pfs what happens is each packet is gonna calculate their own uh what do you say the, they are gonna have their own uh pre shared key or they are gonna have their own key Uh, inserted to each one of them so it becomes really difficult for someone to uh, decode the values of the packet he might decode one but he may not be able to decode the other one because the key what he tried to decode the one of the packet the same key will not be able to decode the other things so with the help of pfs uh, perfect forward secrecy we can uh, provide additional uh security to the packet as well we can pro we can make a such a way that even if he is able to get three or four packets he will not be able to decode them he he will not be able to see what are the content uh of that okay so this is the theoretical part of the ipsec tunnel okay so there are a lot of topics involved for ipsec okay so regarding the lab 